Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tip Tuesday with LB Ingenuity, where we're delivering all of your marketing tips each week on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in again this week, you guys. So um, today I want to talk about, have you ever heard the expression, there is a fine line between love and hate? Well, guess what? There's also a very fine dotted line between a contact and a lead. And it's really good to know the difference between the two, because what we're finding is a lot of people are buying leads or they think that they're buying leads and they're only really buying contacts. So I kind of wanted to break down um, as we go into this lead generation discussion over the next couple of weeks as to the to the difference between the contact and a lead. So the way that I like to kind of explain it is a contact is just a contact until they take action. And the action doesn't have to be anything severe, like they're calling you up and really want to get on a call with you and purchase your product today. It can be really subtle actions, but until a contact takes any type of action, then they still remain a contact. And I think what's happening is um, people are buying lead lists or what they think is a lead list, but they're really only purchasing maybe contact lists. So the difference in that would be, for instance, um, uh, I went to, or I was a vendor, let's say an exhibitor at an event last week. And um, there was a hundred attendees total. And 50 of the attendees uh, came by my booth, they checked out my stuff. They took my business card. They took my materials. They maybe had um, a demo or some kind of presentation about my product. They know about me. They know who I am. And they may have even left me a business card that I can put into my CRM. Those are leads. Those are people that took an action to engage with you or at least to learn more about your product or service. The other 50 um, are just contact information of people that attended the event, but that I have no idea if they saw my booth, that they walked by my booth subtly. It was no one that I engaged with during the course of the event. And it's just someone unknown to me and possibly someone who doesn't know anything about my product or service. Those are contacts. And um, it's great to have contacts, don't get me wrong, because contacts, you need a lot of contacts in your CRM because um, sales is still a numbers game and contacts can be easily flipped to leads and then nurtured over time. So um, there's a lot of validity to have a lot of contacts in your CRM, whether or not they're, they're leads quite yet. Um, but you just need to know, you need to be aware of, of what you're purchasing, right? Um, because uh, you want to, the other um, reason you may want to buy contact lists is because what happens is in organizations, especially um, decision makers, you know, they don't really want to be found sometimes <laughs> and um, they will change up their details quite frequently. So um, especially when you get to the C-suite, so they will... Um, you know, change their mobile numbers quite frequently or change a little nuance of their email address sometimes. So sometimes it's worth the investment to get verified contact details of decision makers in a more uh, fast way to then start to be able to engage these folks. So there's still uh, credibility and merit to buying contact lists, but I just don't want you to make the mistake of thinking, you're buying leads and you're really just buying contacts. And, and that's that's the difference. So, um, you know, a contact again is still a contact until it takes action. That's what I always like to say, but it doesn't have to be a very um, powerful action. It can be a passive action. So for instance, um, one example of a passive action would be, I have this contact and I sent them an email campaign and they simply opened it, viewed it, and didn't opt out. Well, that was still an action, albeit a very subtle pa passive action, but that changes it from a contact to a very cold lead. 
And then at that point, you can score it as you move it on into the process. So it doesn't have to be um, any action that requires a whole lot of effort. But another example of buying digital leads, and there's a lot of um, examples about this, but a difference in buying a digital lead versus buying um, a contact list would be if an agency is um, directing a lot of traffic to your website and to your contact form. And by doing so, people are completing either a contact form or they're trying to chat with your chat bot or they're taking some action that you can actually see. Then those are actually leads. Those, those um, marketing vendors or marketing service providers are sending you uh, leads in a digital capacity. And there's all types of uh, leads by the way um we have seen you know you there's a lot of organizations or um marketing agencies out there that'll do a lot of what i call the business development side of things on cold call like they'll get you as qualified of as lead, lead as you want them to be but again your definition and their definition has to be congruent from the onset and really just be mindful because um two there should be and if you think about it there definitely should be a differential between and cost between just a contact versus a cold lead and definitely a price differential for what you're paying between a cold lead and a hot lead that's ready to buy like in the next week. So um, if you think that you're buying hot leads and it sounds like a deal, it probably is because you might only be buying contacts and that's something that you need to kind of flesh out before you sign any contracts and just be mindful going into 2023. So um, if you were new to seeing us, but kind of liked what you saw, then feel, feel free to subscribe below to the button below and give me a comment or a like. I want to hear from you. And I also want to hear, lastly, if these tips, um, if you're able to incorporate any of these tips into your um, marketing routines today. And yeah, I hope you have a really great week. Stay well, be well. And until next week, I'll see you next time.